Madam Speaker, let me draw to a conclusion. Prior to the establishment of the elected presidency, the system for appointing the president by this House allowed Parliament to take into account a fine balance of considerations in appointing a president to office. It allowed for consideration of qualities such as profound learning, good character, high reputation, and strong moral fibre. The ethnicity of a candidate was also important, given our multiracial composition. The outcome was that the presidency was appointed from among the major racial groups, providing for them to be represented in the presidency from time to time. The inception of the elected presidency in 1991 did not change the president's foremost symbolic and unifying role. However, it overlaid onto the office an additional custodial role and transformed it into an elected office. Today, it is no longer this House that balances all the considerations when appointing a president to perform the president's unifying and symbolic role. We therefore need another framework to achieve and maintain this fine balance. The proposed five-term hiatus mechanism helps, where necessary, to facilitate the periodic election of members of different racial groups to the presidency. This ensures that even though presidents are now directly elected, they will, over time, continue to collectively embody the multiracialism that symbolizes us as a people and as a country. We must also ensure that the eligibility criteria stay updated to maintain a measure of assurance that presidential candidates have the necessary experience and expertise for the custodial role. These add to our continuing efforts to improve the elected presidency so that the President's custodial powers are exercised in a timely manner and with sufficient weight given to the collective advice of the Council of Presidential Advisers. <clears throat> this will provide stability to our system and also help to avoid gridlock in situations where the President and the government do not agree. Madam Speaker, in January this year, the Prime Minister spoke of the need to ensure that our country does not get swept off course by a transient public mood or an erratic government. The government needs to be able to respond to the mood, but not go too far and capsize the boat. I identify with this analogy at a very personal level. <laughs> I devoted many years of my life serving in our Navy in that time, I experienced navigating through both calm waters and rough seas. We learned never to underestimate the power of the seas. We could not control the environment around us, but we sailed with confidence in the knowledge that even in the face of a challenging environment where the unexpected might occur, we had built into our vessels various systems to maintain their stability and integrity. One of these is to provide sufficient ballast. In rough seas, this helps to prevent the ship from pitching and rolling uncontrollably and capsizing. Yet, if there's too much ballast, the vessel's speed, agility, and responsiveness will suffer. Our nation like a ship, needs an optimal amount of ballast, enough to keep us stable, but not so much as to render us sluggish and unresponsive to change. Our presidency has always served as our flag, our maritime flag, a symbol of our identity at sea. We want to make sure that the presidency remains a symbol Singaporeans from all communities will continue to identify with. But since 1991, it has also become 
an important part of our ballast system, stabilizing our ship by safeguarding the two key areas, our reserves and key appointments. The proposed amendments seek to enhance the ability of the presidency to play both these important roles, to help keep our people united and our country stable. Madam, I beg to move.